Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks and you are checking out a contact tutorial for ADSR. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make better sounding 808s, especially if you're a Logic user. This is just a great way to get an 808 sample that you really like into a playable situation. You can play it on the keyboard or you can input MIDI information in your DAW. So if you're an Ableton user, uh, this tutorial might be a little bit redundant because you guys get the cool sampler that comes with live. Uh, FL Studio has it as well, has one as well. Logic gets the really, really crappy uh, EXS24. It's really tedious and difficult to work with. So this is how I handle 808 samples for the most part, like 808 sub basses and even sub basses. Now we're going to look at a uh, instrument that I have ta I've grayed out the, uh, the branding. I don't want to throw this company under the bus, but this is a very popular uh, hip-hop urban sound design company. And what we have here is an 808. I'm going to play it. So that sounds good. Okay, but the problem with what a lot of these uh, libraries do, and this is just a contact thing, is if I play this C right here and I play the octave above it, it's a shorter sample. So I have it set to polyphonic, so listen to that. Do you see how the low one rings out longer? That's a problem if you're working in slower genres, maybe your R&B, your future R&B, your OVO, your more of the chill hip hop, and you need to hold out that 808 or that sub bass for a while. This is a very common theme in a lot of the uh, 808 libraries that I've come across. So I'm gonna show you how to make your own 808 instrument, a basic one inside of Contact. And if you've never done it or never used Contact's backend, don't worry, it's still pretty easy. I'm not a contact guru by any means. All right, so we're gonna go to file. We're gonna go to new instrument. I'm using contact five, if you guys care. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on this little wrench. I believe that's a wrench. I'm a musician, not a tool guy, but um, that's embarrassing. But yeah, I think that's a wrench. So click on that. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the, uh, you have all these different editors. You have instrument options, which you don't need to worry about. You have group editor, mapping editor, and the wave editor. And we want the mapping editor open, so click on mapping editor and you get this grid. Now all these keys correspond to where you can potentially load samples in different zones and groups of samples. So then what you need to do is you just need to find your, uh, your sub bass sample of choice. We're going to use this one right here. So what we're going to do is drag and drop this into contact. Doesn't matter where for now. We will figure that out in a minute. So we're going to get this right there. So it's just one sample and I'm going to click this and I'm going to stretch it. All right. So we want to do something though. Uh, this, there's a couple things we're going to do real quick. So we have the sub in there. But we want to do two things. We want to make the sub the length the same. So see where it says source right under your group editor or your mapping editor? Uh, if we click map, it'll actually say it right here. So we don't even need the mapping editor open. But if you have the mapping editor open, it'll say source and then DFD. This is a typical sampler stretch. Do you hear how that high one, I'm, I'm hitting uh, two octaves apart. It stops a lot quicker. Now, Contact comes with these Time Machine Pro and Time Machine 2 that we're going to use for this to handle how Time Machine stretches or handles how we're spanning through the different keys because this is just one sample. So now let's try that. Okay, so now it's equal. So that's really cool because now I can work up and down the octaves. And they're going to hold out and sustain for the same time. It's that simple. I don't know why contact libraries don't do this. It's not hard to work it in. This is one of the cool features of contact. It's how string libraries are made and all that sort of stuff. All right, so the last thing that I'm going to show you how to do in this video is how to get to be monophonic. Because right now, I could play a chord, which, which you would not typically do with a uh, sub bass or an 808. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit script editor. Contact can... Uh, it, the, the really interesting thing about contact, if you guys know absolutely nothing about this, is that it is the really genius element is the scripting. It's basically computer programming and code that can tell a contact to do certain things. Everything from show a knob or a slider or a background 
to handle how it plays certain notes. Now the coding, if you don't know anything about uh, computer coding or computer programming, don't worry, we're using a preset. So if you click on preset, you go to factory, you're going to go, you see all these different things. You're gonna go to performance and then you're gonna select unison and portamento, okay? So right now what you have is these little, these modes right here. You have mono mode, portamento, unisono. Well, if you go, if you click off of the wrench, you won't see this. So if you want to be able to see these, you have to add a little bit of code to it. So you only have to add one line of code. So I deleted the top part with the, with the information who made the script. You're going to click under where it says, see it, so it says set UI height, set script title. I'm going to click there, enter, hit a tab to keep it. I hit two tabs to keep it kind of nice and organized. and Or one tab, sorry. And then you're going to type the word M make. So M-A-K-E underscore P-E-R-F, like perfect, P-E-R-F. And then the word view, V-I-E-W, perf view. Okay, and then you're going to hit apply. And then it'll say down here, script updated with no errors. And if you hit the wrench now, you can actually see the controls that you just created. So you just made a contact instrument. Okay, so right now I can still play chords, but let's turn mono mode on. Now I can't play chords. And then I even have portamento. So this is how I usually manipulate my 808s when I'm producing trap, anything 808 heavy, whether it's dubstep, trap, uh, hip hop, OVO, R&B. This is what I'll usually do is I'll, I have a template made that I usually use and you can just really shape the sound that you want. So if there's that really cool 808 sample that you may have got from a sound set or a sample pack and you don't know how to get it into a, into a playable instrument, here's how you can do it using the industry standard contact. If you guys have any questions or comments, let me know below. I hope you guys got some cool information from this tutorial. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.